Hi, I'm Miss Lonnie, and I'm a teaching artist with PS Arts. I teach visual arts and music to TK through second grade in Santa Monica, California. Welcome to Tabletop Art. Today's artist is Vincent van Gogh. Vincent van Gogh was born in the Netherlands, March 30th, 1853. He's a post-impressionist artist whose movement and color is evident in every brush stroke. We know a lot about Vincent because of the letters between he and his brother, Theo. We do know that when he was alive, he only sold one painting. Imagine how surprised he would be to know that today his paintings are worth millions. Today we're gonna to have a look at some of his still lifes. A still life is an arrangement of objects that are painted or drawn. Let's have a look. Van Gogh is one of my all-time favorite artists. I just love all the movement and color in his work. So today we're going to not do the typical still life that's with flowers or fruit. We're gonna take objects from around our house that we find that have interesting lines and shapes. Um, sometimes it might be challenging the way the lines come together. Just find some fun, colorful objects that you might want to try to draw and then come back with us and let's get started. I'm gonna use a drawing pencil and eraser today for highlights. And then I have colored pencils, drawing paper, and of course it's on a larger piece of paper to protect my surface. I'm gonna start with my vase here. And so I'm just gonna look at the shape. And with impressionism, it's not so much about getting it to look exactly like the shape as much as getting the color and the movement because even though this is a still life especially in Van Gogh's still lifes with the small brush strokes and thin brush strokes of impressionism you really see the movement in the piece so I'm going to start with the rectangle shape at the top and sometimes I like to give it an extra little curve just to give it more movement and I see a little bit coming from this side as well, so I'm going to put that side in. Then there are lines that kind of make the pattern of this piece up. And again, it's not about getting as many lines in, it's just kind of the, what you, the impression of what you see. It's like a little double part here, so I'm going to put that there. Also some polka dots. on the pattern of this face. All right, the next one I'm gonna do is the little goblet here. And this is a really fun thing to do because it has the different sections that you can kind of create by going behind things and around things. You'll see as I draw it. I'm gonna start with the round shape here, or the oval shape that you see for the top. And I'm not gonna worry about the size of it. It doesn't even have to be the same size in reference to the, to the vase. I'm just really using them as individual pieces. So I'm gonna start here with a little oval shape here. Then I'm gonna come down into nice curves here. Even has a curve line here at the bottom. Then I'm gonna go around the back to give it that first part. Then as I look underneath it, I see a lot of things happening here. Some shapes go around each other from behind lines go in different directions and curve around each other. It's a fun piece to do. Okay, so then the next one I'm going to do is the water pitcher. And you can leave it on the cloth and do it on the cloth. You can set up a whole scene. But I'm just really into, into the individual pieces right now. All right, so the next one I'm gonna do is this, and I'm gonna start with the little shapes at the top here. And it kind of has 
several little lines that go back like that. And then the top comes right out of there. Into this piece. Then it has these lines that go out. Give it that movement again. Come back around. It has a double edge. also has one extra little piece here. Then I'm going to go into the body of the of the, the piece here and one thing that's fun is it has all these designs and because it's a hand-blown piece from centuries ago it has a really fun shape to it. It's not straight lines at all. This handle kind of goes into the piece of, of the body and the spout as well. So I'm going to start with a line here and it's going to go down Okay, so now I have my objects and if I want to I can draw some cloth around that or not. It's up to you. You can put a table line. And with the cloth you can start noticing that you might see little shapes that show up like little areas that look like little triangles. So you can just go in and kind of sketch out those lines that you see. So to make the little etchings that are in this piece, the white etchings, I'm going to use my white pencil. And you won't really see these marks too much until I add the other colors. But I'm just going to add some nice texture to both the middle of the body and the sides. There isn't any etching marks on the handles or the top, but I could still put a few little white lines and color a few areas in there for little extra highlights later. Okay, I've put all the little white etching marks in, and now I'm gonna start coloring on top um, to reveal the white underneath it. The one thing you want to do is think about with this all the different colors that you see in there. So maybe pick a few colors that you might use. I'm just going to start with the silver first and I like to outline my area. And then I'm going to start going over those white swirls that I made earlier and they should start showing up. Maybe switch colors. Again, looking where you notice where it's dark, where the colors change a little bit. Go back over it. So using that kind of tic-tac-toe drawing or shading grade going back and forth will really give you a lot of extra texture in this process. Also, I just like to sometimes switch colors in different areas too to make it look a little darker, a little lighter. You can also come in with your eraser and look for highlighted spots and just take the color that you did out. So you want to keep going until you finish your whole handle, the whole piece, and Again, go back over it, look for the dark areas, look for the light areas, and continue to work on it until you like the result. I'm going to hold it up to the camera now and show you a little closer 
so that maybe you can see where the white spots show up. The next thing I'm going to color is the little goblet. I'm going to pick a couple of shades of red. Okay, so I'm going to go ahead and outline with my darkest red, just the top part here that I want to be red. Put a couple of highlight spots. I'm going to make a little rectangle here. It's maybe a little bit here and a little bit inside here. Then I'm going to go around the glass part with the white. I go back to the red. Again, try a couple different directions. That white is really reflecting the color, which is nice. I might go in and just put a touch of red here or there to reflect some extra color in this glass part. Also, I might use some silver for that. Some little patches of extra shine in there. And then the last thing you're going to do is get some colors and start coloring your last piece. So you want to keep coloring until you finish your whole picture, adding darker areas, highlights. You can add more objects to your work. Just keep going. Draw a bunch of things from around your house. And remember to send me those pictures of your finished work to craftbag at yahoo.com.